If you watch my channel, this little telescope here, the Ascar VR5, is nothing new because I reviewed it on the channel recently. And overall, it's a great little telescope. Mechanically, it's beautiful, and optically, it's really good. But when I was testing the telescope to do the focusing of the telescope, I was using a Batinoff mask because I hadn't fit an autofocuser to it. Now, I could fit a ZWEAF to the telescope, and Ascar kind of assumes you will because they even have a cutout in their protective box for this so you can actually fit the, the scope into the protective box even with a ZWEF connected but somehow I felt like the ZWEF was not good enough not beautiful enough for the mechanically beautiful uh, construction of the focuser mechanism. So I was really happy when there's a company called Oasis Focuser that contacted me out of the blue. I had never heard of them, but they wanted me to review one of their electronic focusers, the Oasis Focuser, and I have it already installed here. So I received this little focuser for free from uh, Oasis Focuser, so just so you're aware of that. And this is a clamp style of focuser. So on the shaft, on the focusing shaft where I would normally attach a coupling to the EEF, I attached a gear and that gear is meshed to another gear that's within the focuser here. And the focuser com comes with a crutch. So right now, I cannot, if I use like the other side of the focus knob, I cannot move the focuser as would be expected when I have something like the EEF installed. But if I move the crutch to the off position here, suddenly I'm free to move the telescope focuser manually, which is super, super convenient, especially if you've like finished imaging and you're putting away your gear and you're trying to fit the scope in its case, but <laughs> you forgot to retract the focusing tube so it doesn't fit in the case. Whoopsie. So if you have a clutch, um, like this one, then everything is fine. You can do it manually. That's super convenient. And of, and of course, if you're doing visual imaging, this is already also really, really cool. Now, compared to something like the ZWEF, one of the bad points of this focuser is that I found it fairly complex to install, at least on the Ascar-V. I get the feeling that on some telescopes, it's going to be super easy to install because you just like putting the clamp on the telescope, tighten it, and then almost the end. Uh, for this one, I had to kind of jump through hoops, but again, you'll see the unboxing and the um, installing of this focuser later in the video. So that's one thing, like depending on the telescope, it might get quite complex to install, but then sometimes that's also the case for the EEF. It's just the EEF is so popular that there's all sorts of mounting hardware already available. So that's something that's against this particular focuser. Now, there's also the fact that it requires a 12 volt uh, power supply, uh, which is not the case of the most recent version of the ZWEF. Otherwise, once installed, it starts, it looks like it's going to work well. But, but first, let's install it together. We have a packing list, main assembly clamp, connection screws, tightening screws, set screws, locking screws, gears, hex keys, USB 2 cable, temperature probe probe and yeah I, I think I received a bit more to fit the Ascar telescope we'll see so in here oh this is nicely labeled we have like box hex keys temperature probe main assembly gears screws clamps general adapter this is nice let's open all of this and try to install it on my Ascar telescope on the Ascar telescope uh, and on any te telescope where you install the focuser you want to make sure that you don't use the fine focuser that I have on this side, but the coarse focuser on this side. And the easiest way to take care of this is to simply remove the grub screw that holds the focuser in place. I mean, don't remove it completely, just loosen it and we can remove it. And I need to install the uh, focuser on this. I was hoping that one of the clamps that was provided with the focuser would be enough, but they're not quite the size uh, required and the focuser shaft itself is too short. So I cannot use that and I will need to use an adapter that will look like the EAF type of adapters. Let's see. And that adapter still happens to be in this box uh, labeled general adapter. So here are the contents of that general adapter box. We, ha we have a clamp, we have a screw that will want to just like fit on the focuser like that. And and the screw will fit onto the screw of the actual focuser main assembly that I have here. Now let's first attach this gear to the focuser shaft since I'm going to need it. And I can just 
I want to make sure that I have one of the set screws, one of the grub screws that came, by the way, from this little uh, screw bag. Um, I want to make sure I have it on top of the flat part of the focuser, which I have at the very top here. So I put the focuser in. I don't put it flush against the uh, focuser tube or whatever it's called. And I just tighten it. Okay, and let's make sure with the focuser that we can move without issues. Perfect, so this thing looks good. And I'm just gonna slightly tighten these other set screw uh, that I have that's not towards any flat part. And then put back the uh, ball bearing. Now the next objective will be to put this here, but we want to make sure that this doesn't move. So we need to use this adapter here. And this adapter will go on top. It will go towards that adapter here, but they need to fit together. There are screw holes on this side that need to align with this adapter. And if I just put it on top here, this is too low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use included washers and I'm gonna use two washers. And this is really because of the design of this particular Ascar V or 5 telescope. So it would may be very, very different for your own telescope. So then I can line this up and use one of the provided screws that fits perfectly on the Ascar screws. And by the way, I've removed the Ascar thumb screw that came here and I can tighten this. And this fits pretty decently. I can add back the thumb screw, although it's not gonna be very useful anymore. Now that I have this set, I can put this on top and I can use some further screws from the little uh, screw box to tighten this on. So now what I have is I have a 30 millimeter kind of shaft here that is available with a gear that can rotate the focuser. So you can see the gear rotate as I move the focuser around. And so I'll be able to put a clamp on this and that clamp will be attached through three screw holes to the main focuser. So let's do that. So I need to take the main focuser body here and attach the clamp on it. And here we are. So we have this clamp set to the main focuser body and we're able to actually put the clamp on here very easily. And I can orient it as I like. This could be a good orientation. So we have the uh, focuser on and off with the gear not meshed and the gear meshed that can be used like this. So to make sure that we tighten the clamp, I need yet another set screw and I can fit that on and tighten it. And we're done, the focuser is installed. So now it's on an on position here. So I cannot actually turn the uh, focusing knob on this side because it is locked. If I set the position to off, suddenly I have manual control over the telescope focusing, which is really, really nice. One of the cool things is that it comes with an app and the focuser has Bluetooth integrated. So I can actually control the focuser directly from my phone. And I also realized that because I was using the scope upside down to install the focuser, I completely uh, messed up with the on off switch not being visible when the scope is right side up. So I'll be changing that afterwards. Okay, now it's on an engaged position. And, and the app asks for login and password and I honestly don't see any reason why I should need to create an account to use a focuser, so that's not great. But we can do offline login. And here I have a list of focusers that I have paired and I can uh, pair new ones simply by the plus button. It was super easy. So once it's in there, I can actually move the focuser as necessary and it just works. I have also the ability to turn off beeps and do backlash compensation, but I would never advise to do backlash compensation in the driver. I would always recommend doing uh, backlash compensation in the software they used to do auto focusing. That said, I was testing the backlash uh, see, by looking at how much the focuser actually moved when I reversed directions, or basically how much lack of movement there was when I reversed directions but it looks really, really good. Like, there's like almost no backlash. The focuser came with a temperature probe, uh, which you can plug in at the end, but temperature probes are probably not something that I use. I prefer to just like refocus automatically using Nina when my HFR changes throughout the session. So I'm probably not going to be using it, but this is really cool to be able to have this temperature probe available. 
And for those wondering, yes, with the focuser fitted here, we still can put the uh, whole Ascar V in its case. So this is really neat. Also, if you ever forgot to rack in the focuser before you, you uh, put your equipment away, then this is super convenient because you can just uh, set the clutch to off and then rack it in manually, which is not something you can do with the EAF. And of course, the focuser comes with ASCOM drivers. So I'll be installing ASCOM drivers and see how well the focuser can connect to my computer so that in the end, I can perform autofocus with Nina. So Astro Oasis, by the way, I'll put the links, of course, all of the links in the description. The focuser itself is supposed to be around 360 US dollars. And they have the Android app, the Apple app, and ASCOM uh, driver as well. And they have super detailed uh, installation manuals for a variety of telescopes, just not mine. So I had to improvise as you saw earlier in the video, but it's working, so that's really good. The installation of the ASCOM driver went without a hitch and I can connect to the focuser, no problem whatsoever. And I can probably move it. So the step size is quite small. So I have to move it a lot of steps to see anything. But yes, I can see the focuser just moving there. Now the maximum increment is set to 80,000, but I feel like I want that to be larger because for my particular telescope, the step size is actually super small, which is very good because you can get very uh, fine settings. Uh, but I can say that the max position is like more like 200,000. Apply, okay. And let's try to reconnect it. And yes, so now it's 200,000. And I've also attached the temperature probe to the focuser and we do get the temperature in Nina. So everything seems to be working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. So the real test will be under the stars. My feeling is that my, my backlash will be exceedingly small and also that I will likely need very large focusing steps in Nina for autofocus to work successfully. We'll see, fingers crossed. So with that, let's test out the Astro Oasis, Oasis focuser under the stars. We're outside, we're at night. I have a laptop illuminating me from below in a creepy manner, don't we love it all? <laughs> and of course, I have my telescope back there. And so the time has come to to try out the autofocus and see if it works well, because really what we all want when we have an electronic focuser is for autofocus for imaging to work well. If that doesn't work, then it's worthless. If it works, then it's great. It's like kind of binary. Either you get a great result or you don't. And if you get a great result, good. If you don't, it's the end and we don't accept anything short of perfection in terms of focus. So let's try it out. I'm going to connect to the mini PC that I have sitting on top here. And we're gonna test out if everything works fine with the Astro Oasis, Oasis focuser. Ooh, that's always a, a mouthful. I'm on my remote computer. And as is usual during this season, I'm uh, using Algeba as the star to test my autofocus against. So you can see I have centered the star and I have, let me take another exposure so I don't get star trailing. There, much better. And uh, I have also like done some rough focusing like based on my eyes because my eyes are still definitely good. Uh, I've also set up the focus step to be 200 steps based on what I've observed as to how much the tube was moving when I was like moving the, the focuser. And uh, I've set the overshoot backlash just to be safe to like 1000, just like because 1000 steps on this thing is almost like nothing. So I want to see whether this is going to work. So let's uh, try to go to the autofocus and start, start the autofocus. Here we are, I've started the autofocus and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed. And we have the result on the screen. We get a beautiful V curve. I'm not sure why Hocus Focus decided to re reject like the last point here, but regardless, we have the final focus point apparently at 59972. So I wasn't too far off with my manual, like uh, with the eyes type of focusing. Now, let me take a five second exposure here just to see how that looks like. And uh, it does look nice and sharp, but then so did it when I uh, focused manually. 
and the stars in the corner are good. This is nice. This is a good telescope. Um, okay, so now that we've seen that the focus is uh, working apparently decently, my next step, as usual, is to double check with a baton of mask that we are indeed focused properly. So here is my 3D printed baton of mask for the Ascar with the 80 millimeters objective lens, which is now what I'm using with the flattener. I'm going to just put it on top and with my PC, let's try to see if I take another exposure. Does it appear well in focus? Because that is the most important. And the answer is in. Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely yes. This is a resounding yes. Like, wow, perfect focus. It's amazing how far technology for astrophotography has gone <laughs> in those few years because, oh my word, this is like nothing short of miraculous for an old timey like me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there you have it. This is, I'll put, by the way, links again in the description. Yes, this is yet another focuser, yet another uh, thing that is available to play with. You can, of course, go with the EEF, which I think overall will do a great job as well. But if you have like a heavy imaging train, uh, or if you want something a bit different than the EEF, there's another possibility. Apparently, this focuser is very popular in China. And as we can see, it does the job. I like the way it's attached. I like the way it works. And I like, I really like that we have a clutch so I can go back to manual focusing with this telescope that has like multiple flatteners, extenders, multiple even lenses. It means I need to rack in and out the focuser quite a bit. And just being able to temporarily switch to manual, it's really convenient. I'm also thinking that this type of focuser might be good for the newer uh, William Optics telescopes that have an internal focusing system, whereby the uh, focus knob that is normally at the end of the telescope ends up being at the middle of the telescope, so right in the middle of the dovetail bar. <laughs> and maybe installing something as like large, large as the EF, that might then be, be an issue and having this round thing directly on the focus knob, which is kind of like an extension of the focus knob, is naturally going to fit better. I have no idea, but that may be the, the case. So we'll see. I mean, knowing William Optics, I'm sure they'll have thought of ways to attach the EF. But yes, it's another alternative. It's always good to see competition on the market because if there is a dominant company that has a stranglehold on the market because they have brilliant tech tactics, at some point they might stop innovating. There is always that risk. So I, for one, always welcome uh, competition on the market and I'm always glad to review these uh, products that are maybe outside of the beaten path. And I hope it's interesting for you guys to see what is available, what is out there. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about this. While you're on your way, you may want to like the video and or dislike it if you didn't like it. And you know, if you're feeling generous, you can join the channel. You can also join my Patreon because it's really thanks to my Patreons that this channel is made possible. Thank you so much. I've been able to buy like editing software and equipment to test and have fun with on the channel so I can make more videos, more content for you guys. And it's just like, it's perfect. It's amazing. Thank you again. But besides all of that, don't forget after putting your thoughts in the comment, whenever you can to look up at the near full moon and at the few stars that are visible in the light polluted city that I am in. <laughs> and with that, I'll see you next time.